So what's it take, my friends, to get your home successfully sold in this pandemic real estate market that we're all facing right now? I know you're probably looking at me like, Eric, there's no way anyone's buying or selling right now, but you know what? I'm not exactly sure where you're hailing from, but over in LA and Southern California on the west side in the coastal markets, you know, we're, every day is almost kind of normal right now as far as the numbers go. Now, there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes with necessarily escrows closing or buyers pulling out or sellers pulling out for whatever reason. But as far as the numbers go right now, it's seeming like a normal market. And I'm sure that that's going to change in quarter two as California Association of Realtors is projecting. They're looking at a decrease in values to the tune of a high single digits. That projection may be high, that may be low, it may go higher. We just don't know quite yet, everything's still uncertain. But we do know that people are transacting still. And why are they transacting necessarily in LA? Well, LA is a beast in its own right with respects to real estate and its markets. And I have to say, you know, within the last few years, we've had a heavy presence of tech coming down. Now, we've already had fantastic weather year round, which is a norm in California, but you know, we've also had entertainment for decades upon decades. And now we've got this tech industry that just continues to make its appearance and continues to flood the markets down here in Southern California, especially to the fact that the West Side is actually being called Silicon Beach now. And with great reason too. headquarters for Google was first in Venice and now they're opening their second headquarters at the old location of the West Side Pavilion at Westwood and Pico. Now we also have Yahoo and Facebook in Playa Vista. We have Snapchat in Santa Monica and one of our newest members, which is a big member, no introduction necessary and has been around for a while is Apple and Culver City. So there's still a lot of buyers coming down here, whether they have to rent or buy. And let's look at the numbers right now behind me. You know, this is what our market is doing right now. And I said, you know, we're just looking at numbers. The true impact may not be clear right as of yet, but I'm sure we're going to see that in quarter two, especially. Um, but we're looking at an act of 35 homes for sale right now in Mar Vista. We've got 77 homes for sale in Venice and 42 in Santa Monica. At the same time, you're wondering, well, that's great. There's a bunch of sellers out there. Is anyone even buying? Well, move right over to pending column and we've got 21 buyers under contract in Mar Vista, 11 buyers under contract in Venice and 14 under contract in Santa Monica. Now these numbers are good as of March 26, 2020. And I use that date in particular because that's kind of when the pandemic was starting to really be more of an issue, a concern, which which inevitably led to all of us being at home and our business is closing down. But nonetheless, now let's look at column three. You're probably like, well, that's great. People are under contract, but are people closing, Eric? Well, column three shows that nine people have closed already in Mar Vista since March 26, which is about three weeks ago. We're looking at six solds in Venice and 11 solds in Santa Monica. So people still are transacting. There's people who are still buying and selling no matter what the epidemic is. People have their reasons for buying and selling and that's never going to change because everybody needs to live somewhere. Now, What's it gonna take though to get in front of those buyers? Obviously we can't do private showings. Obviously we can't meet face to face. We can't do open houses. We can't do the traditional things that we're usually accustomed to of uh, being in the home and showing the home and selling the home. So what, what, what do we do now? What do we turn to? Well, I'm glad you asked because I got the five strategies that you gotta be implementing right now if you wanna be a successful seller in this pandemic market. And we're gonna dial right into that and especially stay tuned through the whole video because I'm gonna take you through to the number one strategy and it's gonna come at the end, but it's the number one strategy that is foolproof, bulletproof. No matter what the market's doing, whether it's a pandemic, recession, buyer's market, seller's market, this strategy is by far bulletproof and you're gonna to wanna to stay dialed in. So without further ado, let's go. What's up, what's up? It's Eric Haas with the Haas Group at Douglas Element in sunny Southern California. Hope you guys are doing great hanging in there. I know I'm trying to maintain my sanity with the social distancing and staying at home and being isolated, but we're gonna get through this together. I have to say on that social distancing, the face-to-face -face now, 
obviously is not the traditional way that we're used to, especially interacting with our loved ones, friends and co-workers and clients and what have you. But now we're entering to a new era, a little bit of a revolutionary era, and it's going to open a lot of doors. A lot of ideas are going to pop up because of this, but we're entering into a digitally connecting era where we're finding ourselves on social media platforms, screens of any kind to gather our information, to find value, to connect with our loved ones and what have you. And it's become a totally new circumstance that we're all facing together as a result of this epidemic. Now, how the heck are we going to get your home sold when everyone has to stay at home? Well, I got five strategies that I'm going to dial you in completely in on. So bring it on in. We're going to start with number five right here. Video. Obviously an amazing tool that you should make sure that you have in your arsenal, especially right now in this pandemic. Even before the pandemic, video is a tremendous tool that should be utilized no matter if it's a brand new home of multi-million dollars to remodeled home or even more of a home that needs some fixing up. It doesn't matter the price point. Video is such an amazing tool that can bring so much value to the property. And not only in just in the fact of being able to show, you know, bedrooms and bathrooms and how the layout is and how the master bedroom is and the master bath. And maybe there's a walk-in closet or that chef's kitchen that, you know, everyone is dying to have with that waterfall effect on that ginormous kitchen island. This video opportunity allows you to capture all of that and bring it to that buyer. But on top of that, that is the phenomenal thing about videos that buyers want to be captured by not only what the house has to offer, but what the story is behind the house as well. And what do I mean by the story? Well, the house is only so much. And yes, we live there day in and day out. But what are the outside things in the neighborhood that are going to correlate with our lifestyle, the lifestyle that we love to experience on a day to day basis. Those are very important factors that buyers are looking for, not only to the bedroom and bathroom count and the size of your home and how new it is or how not new it is, but people are really trying to figure out also, is this a neighborhood I can see myself living in? So in order to dial that in as well, the video absolutely needs to capture hot spots that really transcend and make it exciting. So like we're talking landmarks and if you live by the beach, we're dialing in the beach. We're talking hotspot restaurants as well and shopping and places just that you know people can experience not only what the home has to offer, but what the neighborhood's gonna offer them on a day-to-day -day basis. And don't forget those coffee shops too. You gotta have those in there as well because I know there's a ton of people out there that need their daily cup of joe. Now on that note, video also allows the opportunity to be able to share it with your friends, family, and loved ones to get a second opinion or maybe some validation or have some joining in on the excitement. So it's a great way to share and be able to connect people with something that you're super excited about when you're buying a home and right now everyone's sitting at home anyway so it's a great way to stay connected as well but also be able to facilitate buying a home at the same time now the number two strategy is almost just as important and should be facilitated no matter what time of market that we're experiencing but virtual tours are everything right now especially with the fact that you can control it as a buyer and what does that mean well it's set up in a way where you have different points within the home and usually they're the hot points that are throughout the home as far as the entry goes or say the dining room the living room the kitchen the master bedroom the bedrooms everything that the house can basically offer is captured by this virtual tour and it allows a buyer to have a step-by-step -step opportunity to walk through the home at their own pace take as much time as they want and the really cool thing is they can come back and visit anytime they want without even bothering the seller which is tremendous right now especially considering that we all can't go anywhere anyway so this is fantastic as well to share with your loved ones as well to again get that support and validation and excitement going but also it just gives a scale way to understand what the house is all about and you can tie in the neighborhood as well you can bring in the street view just so that you can see the neighborhood but it really gives the opportunity for a buyer to really walk through the house study it without necessarily having to be there and that's of invaluable value right now now I'm familiar with a house that just came on the market around the corner for me and it's super cute but all it has is photos and a sign up. Well, no one's gonna be driving by and photos only can say so much to what, a tune of a thousand words? 
There's no video. There's no virtual tour. How are people really going to experience that at home without those two vital strategies that are just imperative in this type of market? Well, we'll see how it plays out. And yeah, I know that the market is still has a lot of demand from buyers, but still, you've got to have every single tool that's at your disposal working to your positive benefit right now, especially during these times, if you want to be a successful seller and if you want to reach your financial goals with selling your home. Now, let's check in with number three another fantastic strategy and a lot of times a platform that we're all using right now as well to connect with our loved ones and colleagues and clients and and business owners are using on a day-to-day -day basis is FaceTime and Zoom. And now I know there's tons more platforms out there that facilitate similar opportunities that these two programs offer, but I have an iPhone and Zoom has been something that I've just been using through the company and also with my colleagues who are helping me get better and better at my social media. And that's what actually finds me doing the YouTube as well. So on that note, I really appreciate them shout out to mike sherrard there because without him i'd be lost on this one but facetime and zoom are not only used just to you know communicate with our loved ones now that we can't just reach out and give them a hug as we so conveniently like to take advantage of you know now we're kind of subject to our homes again and although these things are allowing us to connect to our friends and family it's a great tool to utilize when working with our sellers and buyers and especially with our sellers because you know maybe sometimes we can't get a videographer out there well case in point personally you know I'm in a position where I have a social media team that actually edits all the videos that I'm actually sharing with you right now as I speak, you know, in a way where it's attractive and exciting and, and gets interest in the eyes of people on it. And that's such a great thing right now. And, and simply with a FaceTime or even a Zoom, a seller's agent and a seller can work together collaboratively and work out a video together that then could be edited and produced and chopped up like you see with some of my videos in a way where it's exciting still. So there's so many tools at your disposal. It's just getting creative, thinking outside the box, getting proactive with it because that's all we have at our disposal right now. And to maximize value, we've got to make sure that we're channeling all platforms to make a benefit to our sellers right now who are still really looking to sell in this market. Once you have those virtual tours, the video, you know, the video that you got set up from maybe the FaceTime or the Zoom call that you guys had with your sellers, the next thing you got to do is make sure that you're taking it to social media. Now, there's two kinds of social media. I hope you're aware of that as well. There's social media and there's business media. Social media is you just going on and making sure that that post is up there. People are seeing it. That's completely passive. I hope, in fact, that you're dialed in on a strategy that you have in place to make sure that when you post, you're maximizing that post. So socially, you can do it fine and dandy, but you got to have that other component, which is business media. And that's where the ads come in, the paid ads. And you don't have to go crazy with paid ads, but you got to understand how paid ads work. Paid ads have a very systematic process to them, especially depending on what platform you're looking at. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, they all have different platforms. They all have different algorithms, which means that they all have different step-by-step -step processes to take advantage of that algorithm and make it work toward your advantage. Now, why am I sharing that with you? Well, the companies that I just mentioned before to you, they're in the business of making money through advertising. They don't care about your ad. In fact, if your ad doesn't perform because you didn't follow the appropriate steps, they're looking to take that ad and just simply pass it to the side and replace it with an ad that is actually getting a lot of interest and generating a lot of views, which in turn leads to them getting advertiser dollars, which is what all those platforms are all about. So make sure that when you are going live on the market with an agent, make sure that they have a dialed in strategy. You need a dialed in strategy on how to take advantage of these paid ads because it's not just enough to have a video and virtual tour just go live on the MLS and their reciprocal websites like Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, the like. You know, that's great and all, but you've gotta be proactive right now because you can't get feet inside the house. So be proactive and this is the best way to do it. But again, you've got to make sure you follow the proper steps. In fact, again, I take advantage full heartedly of my social media team because this stuff sometimes goes above and beyond my head. It's capacity. I mean, there's things called creating audiences and retargeting audiences. And if you've got an agent at all that's saying that they can target an audience, please make sure they elaborate on that because in 2020, 
there was a category that was put in on Facebook ads which kind of limits your ability to target now because Facebook was facing some lawsuits about discrimination and fair housing and so they had to implement this category so that everybody is treated fairly it's equal housing and now you're kind of limited to how you can target there are definitely ways to do it and as i mentioned it's called creating audiences retargeting and repurposing but again that's an extra step that normally none of us have been accustomed to or have any knowledge about so that is epically important to maximize the amount of money you're going to get by putting it in your pocket because the more eyes on your property, obviously, the more people can experience your home, experience the lifestyle they're going to have in the neighborhood of your home, and ultimately either be calling me directly because I put this together for all my clients, or they're calling your agent and getting serious about, it. okay, how do we make this happen now in a safe way with six feet distance? But you know what? That's a whole nother talk, but that's where you want to get to if you're a seller. And if you're a seller in this market, this these strategies are exactly what you have to implement right now. Now I'm saving the best for last. I have to. You know, you guys have stuck it out with me this whole time, so I'm saving the number one strategy for you guys for last. And let me tell you something. This strategy is pretty much obvious, but it's full on bulletproof. It's bulletproof whether there's a recession, a pandemic like we're all enduring right now, a seller's market, a buyer's market. There's strategies to it which find the seller coming through and maximizing the amount of money that goes in their pocket at the end. Now, are you ready for it? The number one strategy, your home's number one asset, the way in which all these other strategies will work is if you price it right. Do not get caught up, please don't get caught up with this overpricing trend where agents are just saying, oh yeah, it's okay, you can start high and just simply cancel, reduce, and come on as new again. No, buyers are savvy, they're aware of that. They know when something has been taken off the market, reduced and brought back on versus something that's brand new to the market. And trust me, their focus goes directly to the new one and not the one that was canceled reduced and relisted as new it's just simple facts my friends why not take advantage the first time make the first best impression especially in this type of market where every single step matters imperatively right now make sure that that price is dialed in on point you do not want to chase the market in this one i get it you know days on market is is not something that is a concern right now it's not going to be adding up for our local mls system that's fine and dandy but at the end of the day, who gives a crap about days on market, really? I mean, we're here to get your home sold. And to be honest, I get them sold in two weeks. So stay here dialed in because I'm going to continue to keep you up to speed on what you got to know as a seller or a buyer or just want to keep up to speed with what's going on in the market locally. I got you covered and nobody does it better. So stay here. Please subscribe. I love all your support, all your comments. I will answer all your questions and I love the likes as well. So without further ado, thank you so much always for motivating me and keeping me here in front of you guys and have a great one. Be safe and I'll see you on the next video. Be well out there.